SpaceX is making huge progress at the Cape. Segment number 7 of SpaceX's Super Heavy Starship service gantry just rolled out to Launch Complex 39A. Interestingly enough, an extension has been added to the waiting crane, so it can lift the final full-size segment into place. And we've got William Harwood to thank for sharing these updates. At Roberts Road, Segment 8 is also prepared for its own rollout within a week while the construction has begun on the ninth segment. At the construction area at the Cape, the pouring of concrete for High Bay 3's foundation appears to have ended, and the structure will most likely begin its erection in the coming days. Elsewhere, construction is underway at a dizzying pace at the Star Factory. The roof is expanded and columns are being installed. It seems that SpaceX is trying to speed up the building of the Cape's next generation Starship factory to catch up with the progress at Starbase. In other words, we're witnessing a race between two factories. Meanwhile, SpaceX's rival, Blue Origin, after four years of halting work, has fully abandoned a transport ship it once intended to convert into a landing platform for its orbital class, New Glenn Rocket. Known as Stena Freighter at the time of sale, Blue Origin purchased the ship for an undisclosed sum, likely within the several million dollar mark sometime in mid-2018. Aside from a flashy December 2020 rechristening ceremony in which Blue Origin owner Jeff Bezos named the vessel Jacqueline after his late mother, the private aerospace company left the ship largely untouched in a Florida port. Small teams of workers would occasionally work on retrofitting the roll-on slash roll-off cargo ship for a future life as a rocket recovery asset, but made very little visible progress despite working on Jacqueline for several years. Now, a few months after a Blue Origin spokesperson first acknowledged that the company was evaluating different options for New Glenn booster recovery, Jacqueline has left Florida's port of Pensacola for the Texan port of Brownsville, where documents show that the ship will be scrapped. According to an unconfirmed report, Blue Origin may ultimately use the same contractors as SpaceX to turn existing barges into ocean-faring rocket landing platforms. Blue Origin had hoped that a large, keeled ship would allow it to launch New Glenn and still recover its expensive booster even if seas were stormy downrange. However, after 107 successful SpaceX Falcon booster landings on flat-bottomed barges that are exceptionally sensitive to wave conditions, just a tiny fraction of launches have been delayed by the ocean. Furthermore, SpaceX has only lost one booster to the waves and it solved that problem by developing a relatively cheap robot. With the benefit of hindsight, it's not hard to see why Blue Origin changed its mind. Much like SpaceX's next-generation Starship rocket, Blue Origin began work on its semi-reusable New Glenn rocket in the early 2010s. Jeff Bezos publicly revealed New Glenn just a few weeks before CEO Elon Musk's long-planned September 2016 reveal of SpaceX's next rocket, known only then as the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS. Both were massive, meant to be powered by huge new methane-slash-oxygen-fueled engines, and designed from the ground up with some degree of reusability in mind. But with fairly different designs and widely different development philosophies, the paths of Blue Origin and SpaceX have only gotten further apart over the last six years. SpaceX thoroughly redesigned its next-generation rocket multiple times before throwing out a large portion of that prior work and settling on an unexpected stainless steel variant that the CEO, Elon Musk, christened Starship in late 2018. And to further differentiate the companies, SpaceX began work on steel prototypes almost immediately and successfully built and flew a scrappy Pathfinder powered by an early version of the same Raptor engine meant for Starship less than a year later. SpaceX then improvised a factory out of a series of tents and began churning out and testing dozens of more refined prototypes, seven of which would go on to perform flight tests between August 2020 and May of 2021. Testing slowed considerably afterward, but SpaceX appears to have begun ramping up again as it began to test a Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 that have a shot at supporting the rocket's first orbital launch attempt. 
that Orbital launch debut has been more or less continuously delayed for years and is about 20 months behind a tentative schedule Musk first sketched out in 2016. Technically, the same is true for Blue Origin, which also said that it intended to debut New Glenn as early as 2020. However, while SpaceX can point to the instability of Starship's design before 2019 as a fairly reasonable excuse for delays, the general characteristics of New Glenn's design appear to be virtually unchanged despite its many delays. The smaller rocket, which is 7 meters wide and 98 meters tall, to starships 9 meters wide and around 119 meters high, will still use aluminium alloys for all the viewers across the pond for most of its structures, will be powered by 7 BE-4 engines, will land on several deployable legs, will have an expendable upper stage powered by 2 BE-3U engines, and will be topped with a large composite payload fairing. Blue Origin cancelled plans for a smaller interim fairing, abandoned plans to land the booster on a moving ship, and tweaked the booster's landing legs and a few other attributes, but New Glenn is otherwise unchanged from its 2016 reveal. Ultimately, that makes it even stranger that Blue Origin has done practically zero integrated testing of any major New Glenn components. Only in 2022 did the company finally complete and test a New Glenn payload fairing. Blue may have also built and tested a partial booster inner stage, which the new Glenn upper stage will attach and deploy from. But the true star of the show, at long last, is an apparent full-scale prototype of new Glenn's upper stage. At minimum, Blue Origin's first test tank should allow the company to finally verify the performance of New Glenn's aluminum or aluminium tank barrel sections and domes under cryogenic conditions. It's unclear how Blue Origin intends to complete integrated static fire testing of New Glenn's upper stage before the rocket's first launch, but it's possible that the tank it finally delivered was designed to support testing with and without engines. Nevertheless, Blue Origin hasn't specified what it actually plans to do with its first New Glenn test tank, and it's even less clear why it has taken the company so long to complete one. While difficult, the methods Blue Origin is using to build New Glenn's primary structures are about as standard as they get for modern rockets. Blue Origin itself even uses the same tech to build its smaller New Shepard rockets. But so does SpaceX, ULA, Boeing, Arian Space, and virtually every other manufacturer of medium to large rockets, including NASA's Space Launch System core stage, which is wider than New Glenn. The results of those challenges are clear. Blue Origin is nowhere close to debuting its next generation rocket, while competitors like Arian Space and ULA are tracking towards the first half of 2023 for the debut of their Arian 6 and Vulcan rockets. SpaceX, who is pursuing full reusability and really only settled on the design of its larger rocket back in 2019, could even be ready to attempt an orbital class launch with Starship before the end of 2022. Still, however, the long-awaited beginning of hardware-rich New Glenn development appears to have finally arrived, and it's possible that Blue Origin's first orbital class rocket could finally start picking up momentum towards its launch debut. Speaking of debuts, that's it for this debut of today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our patreon link in the description below otherwise as always this is kevin with great spacex and my team and i will see you next time